Welcome to the Hall Space Podcast. It's about connections. I'm your host, Dr. Rich Hall, and this is a weekly conversation about whatever and however I see to connect things. For people who want to connect, chat, and learn a thing or two about a thing or two. Without further ado, let's start the show. Hello. Hey there. Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of the Hall Space Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Rich Hall, and with me is my lovely and capable wife, Nicole Hall. Hey there. Hey, so welcome back to another episode. Episode 15. We are so 15. 15 episodes into this experiment. Hey. Glad you could come along with us and be a part of it. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Special week, yeah. Yes, special week. That's a lot going on this For week. two reasons. Two reasons? Uh-huh. Multiple of the reasons. Multiple reasons. All right. One of the reasons that this week is so special. This week is so special. Number one for us, because it's your birthday. It is going to be my birthday this you week. You will be turning... 43. 43. Yeah, you paused <laughs> a long time. What was that? Like you, you forgot. You paused too. I paused because I, I was waiting for you to say it. And then I was like, wait, she might not get there by herself. So maybe I should make sure that I'm Johnny there. on the spot there with oh, me. Shoot. Yes. Yeah, you will be turning 43. Your um, birthday is on Wednesday. It's on Wednesday. I took the day off. Day. Yeah, um, I was like, I don't want to do work that day. Right? Because why? Why? Why would you? I often find over the years, I found it harder and harder. I don't know why that is. I mean, you know, when you when you reach a certain age, your birthday isn't quite as special as maybe it was when you were a child, and right. you know, they they blew up balloons and and uh, took you, and, and there was cake and, and streamers yeah. and all these things happened. Mm-hmm. So the older you get, you know, the less you know that uh, people outside your circle of friends and family don't care that much, right? about it right so um you know the world's not going to come to a stop because you have an event uh so um i would just go to work and for years i was that guy who just went to work but i'd still be in my head like it's my birthday what am i doing here what am i doing here why, yeah why did i do yeah. this to myself like i can blame no one but me you for should this stay outcome. here we'll make it you know special like we do every year yeah you get yeah, I wasn't planning on staying at home. I was going to roam the streets and, and get into adventures. But. You're going to you're going to get into COVID adventures. Yeah, really? not really. <laughs> no. at, at the most, I was thinking I could go to the record you could store. Go to the record I could go store. to the comic book store. You beat me to it. I was totally going to say you're going to go to Mavericks. You're going to go to the record store. Yeah, you're going to go one of my best downtown birthdays. to get some um, something to eat that's your favorite. I'm going to go get some favorite foods. Yes, I'm going to do some. I'm going to do some adventurous things that. You know, we're going to be different during COVID, but, Mm -hmm. you know, I like the idea of not having any major responsibility to other people. Nothing against my clients or the job I do. I really do love the job I do. But the idea of just having a day where I don't have to do it is like, "Mm, okay, middle of the week, just take off. Listen, I I don't know. Go to work. Right. Don't do that. Listen, I don't don't know if anybody's seen it, but Michael B. Jordan put out a video that said self-care is important. Yeah. And self-care is important. Mad important. Super important. Mad and important, it's your son. birthday. Yeah. And you're in this house every day. Every day, all the time. All day. Yeah. 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 Take care of these kids. So and take your wife yeah. and grandmother. Yeah. Grandma yeah. and the cats and all this other cats. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The cats. yeah. Ugh, fighting cats. cats. The fighting right. cats. <laughs> the fighting cats. <laughs> the fighting cats. We have two cats. Uh, we have an old cat. Uh, Quintessa. Some people at my job knew her as basement cat because those, I would tell jokes about <laughs> she basement cat. lived in cat. the basement for a number of years. Yeah, we moved from one house. Out. We we got her at an apartment. We moved to a house. Then we moved to the second house. Mm-hmm. She hated the house. She and hated so she the house. She refused to leave the basement. It was an old house. It was built in... Um, 1902, something like that. Yeah, it was genuinely... the creepy cellar, but it had also this charm, this Victorian charm. Yes, you know? yes. High ceilings and, and very nice architecture. Windows and architecture. It had a weird, it had a nice, it was a nice little house. It was cute. Very cute. Yeah, yeah. the Hereford, Hereford, Hereford Mansion is what we called it because she, it was a step up. Yeah. And Quinn, our cat, Quintessa Thindiway, uh, she hated the house. She hated so, it. 
And, and I, maybe because she hated the process, like we put her in a box and then took her to the basement. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the intent was to let her sort of acclimate to the basement and then slowly but surely bring, bring her, her to the house. Every time we brought her up. But she refused. She Every time we it. brought her up, she refused to stay. She would run back to the basement. And we were there like four Yeah, like four years. years. Yeah. And she lived in the basement for four years. So she would occasionally like meow and sometimes she'd want attention. Mm -hmm. She'd come up to the stairs and meow and you'd touch her head. But mostly she stayed in the basement and pooped literally everywhere in that basement. It was it. So we call it a basement, but it's really a creepy cellar. That's what Nicole called it. But it was it was listed in there by the real estate agent as a basement. It was for all intents and purposes, a basement. Creepy Uh, cellar. But it was like scary movie. Yeah, it was like rock walls. Rock walls. Like that constantly shed. It looks like shed pebbles and. And, uh, yeah. dust. and you had to crouch sold. down to get down yeah, in it was there. A, it was a little low in a low yeah. ceiling for a six foot tall man like it myself. It looks like it was part of the Underground Railroad kind of creepy. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> right. Yep. Right. Yep. And so the cat lived in that basement. and She lived um, in there and she puked and pooped everywhere. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was, a, it was a bitch to clean it out when, yeah. when we moved Ugh. because she had created so much mess yep. down there. And we kept her with a, a litter tray, but she just didn't respect it. Um, she didn't care. And maybe because the place was filled with so much dust that so she gross. just didn't see it as valuable yeah. to continue using. She didn't using. care at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, it was, a, it was really hard to clean up. Yeah. Um, and... Yeah. And, and then we moved here. And then she rejoined the family she after rejoined, four years. Legit. She she rejoined the family. Right. She lives with us amongst us. Oh, right, right, right. Us. She literally is amongst us all the time. Mm-hmm. And it was a strange transition to go from this cat who did not seem to like us uh, to, um, you know, first, she was like our first kid. So she, we she, were like we got, super. When we got married. We yeah. got her like six months in, so mm-hmm. she's as old as this marriage is. Yes, and her name Quintessa Thandiwe means pure loving one. Yes, because that's right. she would sleep with you on top of your face and right. purr and just right, 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 right. She's so very this loving. white, fluffy Siamese cat. Yeah, there'll be a picture of her. That yeah, show we'll po- we'll post it. Uh, but- we have some pictures, and so um, she was like this important part of the house. We moved to the, like I said, we moved to the first house from mm-hmm. the first apartment. Uh, after that fiasco that was the end of the first oh, apartment, yeah, we, we got into some trouble with the landlords. But that's another story for another day. We won't tell that one today. Slumlords. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so um, she was still a part of the family. And then we started having kids at the house. Mm-hmm. And we brought another cat in. And she didn't get along with that cat great. But she got along with him definitely she, better. Yeah, she got along she with got him along better. With. He was only a little bit younger than her. Yeah, that's Omari. Omari Bomani. He was only a couple he years our, younger. His name meant... Um, warrior yeah yeah and he was he was a he was a tough cat and i loved him but we he lost was, him under tragic not he, I, I call it tragic circumstances he ran away when we moved to the he new got house lost and couldn't and find got lost and just re- he couldn't find his way home and he was like he just, a dog he would yeah. like chase stuff he would c- catch mice like he yeah. was he would catch squirrels he would he catch squirrels. squirrels he would catch chipmunks yes we would let him go outside and all the animals would make noise like oh no he's coming he's coming he's outside com- yeah you hear that you'd hear the squirrels <laughs> chirping <laughs> chirping yeah because he was out and they would they would want to alert the other squirrels that, that this cat is out and he might cause terror that's <laughs> right. how bad that's, Omari was when he was. It, we, we used to joke it was like Omar on the wire. Like, yeah, <laughs> they'd be like Omar coming, Omari coming, Omari coming. <laughs> He's got his little whistle, <laughs> uh-huh. whistling the farmer in the dell. Yep, uh, and. Um, so, so that was, so we yeah, we lost him we and then here. Quinn moved to the basement and refused to come out. And yep. then we moved here and Quinn was suddenly a new part of the family. Right. And right. just recently within the past couple of weeks, uh, it's been maybe over a month. It's about a month now. Yeah. We got a new cat, Raven. Yep. Raven. They call him Raven or Buddy. Well, so we call him Buddy because you know how sometimes we talk to the kids. We're like, hey, Buddy. Yeah. And so they say that now to the cat, like we should call him Buddy too. So yeah. now... His his full name is Raven Maximilian mm. Marshmallow. Marshmallow oh, okay. is Victoria. So okay, she yeah. added that part. She added that part. Yeah, but they so. call him Raven. Call him Raven. And Raven is a little bit of a bastard in that he he's got claws. He's our first cat. He's the first cat I've had, I think, in years with claws. Normally we get our cats to claw, but that we, is falling out of vogue these days. Not You're doing not it. supposed to do not it. Doing it, even though he is literally ripping he's apart ripping our leather apart furniture. We he had some nice. Mm-hmm. We had a nice faux leather chair in the bedroom oh that my, my wife gosh. sat in by the door. I it's mean, it still favorite. functions as a chair, but it's not. But he is ripping like it. it to ribbons. Oh my gosh, it's the worst. It's a brown chair, and and we have a chaise that he also is starting to rip into. Yeah. And I'm a, I'm a lot more annoyed about the chaise because I feel like I can replace the brown chair, but that chaise is like there was a it's particular a time of, in which that chaise was made, yeah. and it fits the aesthetic it's of the, the aesthetic room. Aesthetic of the room and everything. Yeah, the brown chair does, but not quite. I had always planned on upgrading the brown, brown chair, chair, but I don't want to like have to switch out that brown leather chaise. Because it, 
you know, then I got to get rid of the bed too. And like the whole aesthetic no, is now it, taking it, a turn. It goes in want. perfectly in our room. Right, right, right. And yeah. it's also like I got it at a, I got it off a of Facebook marketplace, big Facebook marketplace shopper. Yeah. A little weirder yep. now with the pandemic. I haven't been able to do it as I much. I feel like but. Facebook marketplace has always been weird. It's like, you no, got no. a toaster. Okay. You think it's Meet weird. Me but I got this toaster. I've bought a lot of things for this house. You do. On you, a Facebook. This house was largely you. furnished. This yeah. desk I have is Facebook Marketplace. It is. Uh, the chair you're sitting in is Facebook Marketplace. It is. Chair in your off chair in your room is Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. My, the chair I'm sitting in, my office chair is also Facebook yep. Marketplace. So well, you face- like to go foraging in that way. I like to go foraging for strangers deals. in their driveway. For yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. It's, yeah, and just brave the. I, I don't know. Will it be bed bugs or will it just? Will it no just idea. Get no what idea. I want. We'll just see. We'll see. We'll but see. I got a I got a desk in the closet that's also from. Uh, yeah. So not a desk, a, a dresser. Well, a and dresser it's always so inexpensive. And what dresser in our closet? Yeah. Dresser in Victoria's that's room. That's right. They're, they're a lot they're, of Facebook Marketplace and it's furnishing. good stuff. It's good yeah, stuff. Yeah, so it's usually always pretty good yeah, stuff. It's yeah. never a, a bad deal. Well, and you know, honestly, if you can catch people during a certain time, I know when Grandpa died earlier this year. We had a ton of really beautiful, good, good furniture. Mm -hmm, We had mm -hmm. the baby grand piano and none of us had anywhere to put it. And we really just needed to get him out of the condo, basically, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. get his furniture, get it's out like, of where there. Where do you put a baby grand piano? That's a huge a, investment. Listen, if I could have so found a place out, to put pianos it. Pianos are hard to offload. They are. They're they are. They're beautiful. Nigh impossible. No one wants to buy them for what they're worth. Mm-hmm, Not even mm-hmm. the the resellers. Yeah. Um, but it was a beautiful piano. But we had a a dining room set, like all of that. We we gave that stuff away, basically. Mm-hmm. Like we didn't charge any money. We just said if you have a truck and you, you have the come ability here, to get it out of here, you have the ability to get. You can have it, and it's it's the furniture I grew up with. Yeah, I mean, and I regret I regret not just taking the furniture and putting it somewhere for myself and storage. We have nowhere to. Put yeah, it we either, have furniture. That's, a, that's usually yeah. the problem when it comes to and no room for death, it. It's big furniture. Yeah. For the most part, you spend most of your life building. You know. Mm-hmm your furniture for your house. Right. And we're, it's not like we live in a mansion where we have a second dining room to right. furnish. Right. So something like that happens and you're like, well, what do I do with, do this, I do with this item stuff? that has some level of um, connection and yeah. history with me? But yeah. I also do not have, like, I've got my own house. You have your home. Well, and that was the discussion that we had. It was like, we're creating our own aesthetic. We're creating our own memory for our children. Yeah. And those were incredibly important to me. Yeah. up as a kid yeah, yeah but there was so much other stuff that we were able to take with mm-hmm. us to to remind us you know yeah. But, but yeah i mean so facebook marketplace great great to do that kind of stuff but mm-hmm. so yeah we got we got the cat and he you know quinn is yeah raven the new cat we're circling back around raven the new cat and he raven he's is a bit of a bro- boxer like five months and quinn is 13 years old and she is over she his- ain't got time for that. Yes. <laughs> okay. She's over him. He is the aggy is little brother. constantly growling at him. She, yeah, and smacking like, him in the face. Yeah. And he's like, are we playing? And she's like, no, get out of my face. And he's just like attacking her out of nowhere. Yep. Often. Yep. Frequ- yep. So frequently. It's a lot. They yeah. fight a lot. Yeah. But and so, she's genuinely just wants to mind her business. She really does. So she reemerged in our family as this creature who just kind of like sits on the edge of couches. <laughs> Judging us all. at the windows. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know what I mean? Like she just sort yep. of wanders about doing yep. her thing. Yep. Um, you know, it was weird for the first couple of months of like, oh, we have a cat in the house again. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then she jumped into bed and was sleeping with us. And I'm like, oh. Oh, hey. so you do like us again. Oh. Yeah. And we had intended on leaving her in the basement. She was like, nah, I don't like this basement the I same. I don't like the basement. It's the same. Uh, yeah. I mean, we, I don't hang out down here, but I, I want to sleep Because, you know, you they say with cats, you're supposed to put them in our room, let them acclimate let to them the new house, and let them yeah. calm yeah. down. But she was like, I don't I don't want to do this basement thing. I'm yep. going gonna, gonna to come up and see what you guys are getting into. Yeah. And yep. she almost immediately became a part of the family again. Oh, yeah. And she loves the brown chair as well. Mm-hmm. She sleeps under it, or she used to. Yeah, yeah. Before... Uh, Raven, Raven started, started messing with her under there. So she's constantly like, growling curse words at him. Yeah, yeah. Like, motherfucker. And you don't want to have to deal with that on your birthday. Like, we, the kids will be at school. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be working. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so. I mean, I, I wouldn't say I don't. You know, I like being at the house. I don't have anything yeah. against the house. Well, per but you se. can go away for a few hours and then come back and we'll mm-hmm. have your birthday stuff ready. So yeah. we, on the day of the birthday mm-hmm. for every member of the family, we do. We like whatever you're, house. we decorate yeah. the house. We do your favorite dinner, mm-hmm. and then um, we have Richie gets two cakes often for his birthday. Do I get two cakes? Am I the only one? Well, you, cakes? you and Ra, 
Oh. Yeah. There's a benefit to being the favorite child. There is a benefit. <laughs> yes. For the yes. firstborn, first of your name. Firstborn, first of your name. I'm not the first of my name, the second of my You're name. You're the second of your name. Second You're second named after your father. And yeah, yeah. Yes. But yeah, so <laughs> it's, you know. There are times where, no, no. I mean, mom will make a cake on your day and. She will. Or she'll, she'll like she does that with almost every kid. Yeah. She'll do it for the baby. You get some Absolutely. kind of sweet and then on yeah. your actual birthday. On your actual, yeah. And normally we would do like a time. dinner or yeah. normally our birthday celebrations, the whole birthday celebrations, for those who've ever been able to attend them, are like a dinner where we go yeah. somewhere and like hang out and, yep. and, and shut, shut it up it until the restaurant kicks us out. <laughs> yeah. They just stay in the parking lot yep. and, and talk some more the until lot they down. tell yep. us to go. <laughs> yeah. So. I miss being able to do that. Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah. I would not. I can't trust a restaurant right now. With like, no, I even know. Even with everybody there, it's no. like. Well, the, the thing you is. You got to pass through all the people to get to your space. And we have our COVID circle right mm-hmm. but we want is, everybody to be able to come you know yeah yeah you don't want to exclude the Johnsons, people the wiggins mm-hmm. like you know we haven't mm-hmm. seen those we we've seen them kind of but not i mean we haven't seen anybody in person i don't think not in it's person not, no uh, uncle beaver came and dropped stuff off on the porch mm-hmm. when you had COVID to mm-hmm. make sure that if we need anything he brought us like um um fruits and vegetables and stuff that we needed yeah um which was super sweet because he lives way far out. Who? Uncle Beaver. Oh yeah, yeah, Beaver. Yeah, he was coming. He did. He did come over to bring me some stuff during COVID. I yeah, forgot he about did. that. Every 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 week or so, he would say, "Do you need oranges?" Or I'm going to the store. Do you need anything? And he'd bring. That's like, right. Us. That's right. So yeah, nice. Family having sweet. family is nice. Man, it's so awesome. But yeah. um, but we still we we maintain our circle and yeah. You know, his. We've well, limited it significantly. Aunt Ruth is, is she's immunocompromised. She's you're immunocompromised. immunocompromised. My mom is immunocompromised. Yeah, it's just so it's, you have to make decisions around the fact that there are many people right. in my life. But so your birthday's coming up. You're turning 43. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be interesting. A for awesome. A for awesome. Yay! Yay! Join it. Yeah, yeah. Get into it. Yes. And and <laughs> I mean, so I'm not against aging per se. I, uh-huh. I you know, there are elements of aging that I definitely could leave. Yeah. Um, better than take, you know, my yeah, back just now be... occasionally hurts. Some of that's COVID. Some of that's <laughs> sitting in Some a chair all the is, time. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. moving around less. Now if I get up and walk around for like thirty minutes, my body's like, So why did you Excuse decide me? What do you not think you're to doing? sit back down? What do you think you're doing? Yeah. And and so I know I need to be more active. I've been yeah. trying my best to be more active when I have. We're the gonna chance. join a. We're gonna do the thirty day challenge, babe. Sure, sure. Yeah, we're gonna I mean, try. It's November first, so of all the days. It, yes, this is when we record this. Is November first. It probably won't come out until November second. Right, right. But, but we're gonna we're gonna try it. We're gonna mm-hmm. do some clean eating, mm-hmm. and we'll do some. You know, cardio. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. Do the fifty squat challenge. Yeah, I definitely need to stuff. get my body back into some kind of shape. Oh man, it's it's. Rough. I think the worst. The last time I was in this bad of shape was that three month span where we, you would neither you or I were working. Oh, right before we got um, pregnant. pregnant with Ra. That was how we got pregnant with Ra, that wasn't is it? Holy how we got pregnant with Ra. Was that Ra or Dave? That was Ra. That was Ra. Yeah, you were unemployed and I was between jobs. You were in between um, for like two months. Yep. And then uh, it was all summer. Yeah. Uh, and you it's know, a hot summer. we were married and uh, doing, doing what married, married people, people do. Things. Yeah. <laughs> and made and, it it, and the thing was, like, we're three months in, and I'm like, I don't feel good. I'm mm-hmm. getting yeah. sick. And uh, it's like, so not only am I laid off mm-hmm. and you're not working, but now we're having a baby. Yup. <laughs> yup. So, so I uh, scary times. I had a bunch of interviews. And I went into my interviews in my second trimester. Mm-hmm. Mad pregnant. Mad pregnant, yo. Undeniably pregnant. I like, had there's a, there's an elephant in this room. I had my jacket baby. buttoned as tight as I could. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm I'm wearing my regular girl suit, but I'm trying to hide this baby bump. Mm-hmm. And so I would, you know, I was reading all kinds of articles on like, you know, whether you tell them or not. And so I made it to the fifth interview at like GE or something like that. It was a contract position, but mm-hmm. it was a with a company with GE or whatever. And I made it and they're like, oh, we have two more levels to go. You know, the last is the president or I don't know of the of the department or vice president of the department. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I said, OK, so I, I hit my eight weeks. You hit eight weeks. Anything after six weeks, you can start telling people. Mm hmm. And I hit that eight weeks and I was like, all right, um, so I just want you guys to know because you're putting me on a project that is specifically time driven. 
I was going to be a project manager. And um, mm-hmm. I said, I'm, I'm, oh, yeah, I'm back pregnant. Oh, yeah, you were going to be a pro- I was going to interview him for project manager jobs. I did. I did. I, I wasn't sure that, you know, development was for me because the last experience was so horrific. Mm. Um, different story for a different day, too. But, but yeah, so I got, I never heard back. I had done so well in all mm. of the interviews mm-hmm. and I never heard back. And, and then, then you said preggers and they were like, Ooh. Ooh. and I, you know what? Honestly, if Ooh. you have a project that's time driven, mm-hmm. you can be out three months, four months, maybe not come back, mm. you know? So, I mean, I, I guess I get it, but you know, send me a, I'm sorry. We are not going to accept you because of this, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Then I interviewed at Cincinnati state. Yeah, I remember that was funny um, right before all this hit and they were offices were ta- or jobs were they were talking about jobs feeling ghosted. Mm-hmm. Right. I don't know if you remember that, but it was like um, they're like they hire people for a job, but then people never show up to the job. And yeah, they, were, yeah. they were upset. That That's right. I remember they we were, were reading ghosted. about that. We're like, yeah, so you but, applied, but then you don't come in the first day. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Day and, or? and they're like super surprised. They're like, yeah. how dare they? Um, they. And, and yet jobs have been doing that to us for years Forever. and they can you do never that. got any feedback on no, no, why no, no, you, no. They, you were not chosen for jobs no it was you just, just the way never it was. hear from them again but the fact that it was happening to the job it was yeah. totally remarkable like oh, oh you're just not gonna come work here got a better but gig I chose you got a better How gig dare you How oh. dare you we just never oh. heard back i can't believe just, Everybody wants to be so the pretty girl at the dance in HR dance. when we don't know if you're going to come to work. <laughs> right. It's like, well, I, I mean, mean, and I remember thinking it was crazy. Like you got the job, but then you don't show up the first day. Like you said, you said you was going to do it and then you don't do it. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm an over communicator when it comes to that kind of stuff. Like, Hey, I'm probably not going to be able to do this. Yeah. Or, yeah. Hey, I'm excited. I'm going to do this. Yeah, no, no, no. The job never had any responsibility to treat you the same way. The, the job never does, which is why if you have days, take them. Take your you sick got, days. Richie Vaughn, you have mass fate. I have so many vacations. You have days. mass days. <laughs> and y'all, he gonna take one for his birthday. <laughs> Bruh, I, took I the have week. so many vacation days. I've got like 20 something. It's probably, I don't mm. know. Too many. It's way too, too many. Too many Ethel. Too many. Yeah. Your mama has mass days too. My mom also does but not take you know what? That's she, where I get it from. It it's is a, a, totally it's, a like sheer, you. it's a learned behavior. It is. But, you know, honestly, she started living her life and going on cruises. And um, actually, the first year that we had Ra, she took, she had so much vacation time. She took two days a week from August up until the oh, end of the right, year. I remember off. that. Yeah. Because she had so many days and they, <laughs> HR was at the point where they were taking her days back. <laughs> because they're like, we could never, because uh, companies yeah, are supposed to yeah. pay you out for those days if you nah, decide just to leave. Take them. They just stop giving she, them to you. Or, she or they, she hit her max. And so she's like, well, I'm going to take Thursdays and Fridays off for the rest of the year and yeah. take care of Rob. Help but, yeah. us take care of our kid. Yeah, that, I remember yeah. that. That was wonderful. Wonderful oh to have gosh, that. Gosh, that's little Hall is a scene. Okay. That's just, yeah. Put yeah. that out there. She'd be having our kids all the time. Yes, we and definitely we appreciate my mom. Shout every, out to my mom. Shout out. We love you and thank you. And you're the real. MVP. You were the real MVP oh in these streets. Because, uh. Because, wow. Yeah. I mean, maybe the kids would be living, or maybe we would kill them. I don't know. No. <laughs> no. no, no, no. We would have definitely figured it out. No. Uh, for sure. But, so, yeah. Um, oh, wait. I'm, I got, I so, lost track of what subject we were so on. So, we were, so we were talking <laughs> about your birthday. Yeah. And we were talking about, um, you yeah. actually taking that time off. Yes, taking time off and doing some things to reflect. and Right, and right, right. So we'll have, you know, the day of, we always do something. Yeah. And then the weekend, either that Friday or that Saturday, we'll have. We usually have a party of some a kind. A party of some kind where everybody can. Under normal can circumstances. Join. And if you're a kid, your first, the day of is, you know, typically at home and then. Mm hmm. The we second party is at Chuck E. Cheese. Chuck E. Cheese is uh, some kind of Chuck E. Cheese. Some kind of Chuck E. Bouncy house. Yeah. Slash, you know, that kind of place. Yeah. 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 That, that's normally what we do. Yeah. Oh, crap. I've got 42 days of sick and 35 vacation days. Y'all. <laughs> I'm y'all. sorry. No, 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 no. 45, 45 sick days. 
41 vacation days. I should really. You should really use those days. Um, yeah, because they do top off. They will start. Yeah, they them do from because me. they can't pay you out for all those oh. days. That's why they put a cap on it. Like we have so many employees. Uh-huh. If everybody decided that they were going to leave, you get paid out for whatever six uh-huh. days you've mm-hmm. accrued. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's simple math, y'all. I mean, five or six of those are definitely days that are going to go to. Um, the, I have to take some of the holidays at Christmas. So there's like three mm, or four of those yeah. between Christmas and New Year's. Sir. But. But you could be like, I'm going to take November off. I could. <laughs> I could <laughs> fundamentally take November off. Or <laughs> be fine. every Friday for the rest no. of 2020 or something if I no. want to. Uh, and this is all, y'all, this is also I, the, the same guy that worked while having COVID. What? Uh, wait, why you got to. I mean, yeah, I'm putting you out there. I mean, I didn't see people in, no, in no, the no, flesh. No, 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 no. Everything, y'all, everything is telehealth. And he's quarantined to uh, Victoria's was, room. My Victoria's and, room in my office. In your office. Those are the two places I went. Those are the two places Those that two spaces no one des- else designated went. designated for me. Yeah. Those were, we had like the caution tape. Yeah, like it's just yeah. your area. Yeah. But you didn't like rest during that time. Yeah. You went to work. I mean, and even I your work. boss was like, ah. Uh, I mean, I took a couple days off. I took the days I felt horrible off. You took the, yes. And then you did. after that, I was like, I think I can see a couple people here. And that right. was like two days. And then you're like, you know, I just don't want to reschedule these people. I'm just going to go ahead yeah. and see them anyway. It's just sitting in my chair talking to them. Yeah. And I was able to do it. I was fine. Listen. I mean, I don't suggest it for everybody. It's I'm not. Poor. So I'm, I'm a workaholic. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember. <laughs> but when but she you asked work me, a lot. What, I work a lot. When she asked what you, me what I was doing that So weekend, what do you do on the weekend? This is how she it was introduced to the romantic side of, of Dr. Rich Hall <laughs> before he was a doctor. Because you're so romantic. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You was, are. I work a lot. You work Because I do work. A, I'm a workaholic. So yeah. I got, what, three jobs now? Um, two half jobs and one full-time job is usually how I operate. They I never, all still count. You can't. It's um, three Jobs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Three. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, they're all within the same. I don't know. If there, uh, there's only like a few times where you've known me where I've only had one gig. I know. When, so, so when since, you said since I started working, since I, I got my first job at Arby's, I know. Way back when I was 16, mm-hmm. I have always like I did that for. Actually, no, I was at Arby's and then I went to work at a production company over the summer. So I did have the very first year I started working, I was working two jobs. <laughs> If y'all can see me rolling my eyes. And listen, I, listen, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. appreciate the work ethic. I do. I really do. Like, man, don't work, don't uh-huh, eat, right? Uh-huh. I, it keeps I, bacon I'm, in the fridge. Listen, I, I literally bring home the bacon. Somebody's got right brand bacon to make Thick the cut. donuts. Yes. Yeah. Bacon. I, I, I agree with that. Uh-huh. But I'm also like, yeah. work smarter not harder so mm-hmm. I try to like get bang out of my hours so I want to do my eight hours uh, and make a lot of money and be done mm-hmm. <laughs> right? well I mean the other side of that is you chose a job where people were willing to pay large sums of money for that yeah. with a bachelor's degree whereas I chose a job where you had to go people all the were way paying up. pennies <laughs> up yeah. until literally up until five years ago yeah. people yeah. were paying me in pennies there's no ceiling for you though it's, I mean I'd have to quit my job and go somewhere else if I wanted to make more I, I mean uh, that's different like so working in the college environment you find I mean most people assume colleges have tons and tons of money but in no. reality they're not paying that great but you know what they do have great health care though they have great health care they have a lot of soft benefits like if you have kids that eventually plan to go to college like oh, you get yeah. free they go free, free. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, tuition which is is worth it in mm-hmm. this environment mm-hmm. uh, and you know free tuition at any of the campuses so you know a lot of soft benefits a lot of things that come with being connected to a college like yeah. you know um Software, Discount, hardware, discounts, tickets, and stuff like that. Access to, to yeah, but, like you, said, um, you know, the the the, the actual salary yeah. usually. I mean, okay, so salary in comparison to other people who are working in the private sector, you know, so it's like I'm doing way better than a person without a PhD, technically, but I'm not right. doing much better than a person who is in certain specialty fields. Like if I had gone into HVAC repair. Right. I'd probably be making right. about what I make or more. Oh, yeah. Uh, particularly after this much experience is sort of yeah. the, the other difference. Well, I mean, and honestly, it just it depends on what you do and where you do it. Right. Yeah. I mean, with any job, it always depends on what right. you do and where you do it. Right. So it's like I can't complain like, oh, no, I'm not doing well at all. I mean, there are a host of people. I'm definitely in a different bracket than, um, yeah, I make more than the average American does currently. Right. Right. Uh, and I'm in a job that's technically safe in a pandemic. And it's flexible. Yeah. 
And it's flexible. Oh, it's incredibly flexible. Which is, Academia is more flexible than, you know, working in a counseling center, but it is flexible relatively. Yeah. I should do that. We'll talk one day about like, hey, what is it like to go get a degree in psychology and why would you do that? Yeah. Um, yeah. I am now officially at the place. Nobody, and I don't talk about this a lot, but I am now at the place where I can sell it. If you had talked to me five years ago when I first got out of graduate school, I was traumatized. So if people He's like, ask I went me, through all of that for this. <laughs> and if people, when people would ask me or they'd send their kids to me to talk about it, I'd be like, oh, do you sure? Are you sure you want to do it? Are you absolutely I certain you, saying, like, you want to do don't this? Don't go to grad school unless you have to. Unless you really know you want it because they yeah. are going to try to just beat it out of you. And true. if you really don't want it, Very true. it's going to so it's going to break your spirit. So don't do that to yourself yeah. unless you were absolutely certain you don't want anything right. else. Well, and, and, and that's also, the reason I did it. I didn't want anything else in my life. And one day, yeah, right. I should also tell the story of like what happened to me in graduate school and how it traumatized me and why. Yeah, it was uh, very... Because that was a... It was a journey. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now I'm on the other side of it and it's like at this point so far away. That's the interesting thing. I will give you this piece of advice before we go to commercial. When you're going through a thing at the time, it doesn't seem like anything else is going... Like it's the biggest thing in your life. But with any trial or tribulation, you get to a point where years later, you're like... Oh, that was a thing that happened. And I remember how hard it was. And I remember how it almost broke me. But now it's just a memory. It's just a thing that if I think about it hard enough, I can remember the emotions and feelings that were tied to it. But I'm so far past it now that it is it does not have to be a thing that defines me at all. And at the time, it was like, oh, my God, I'm facing so many trials from so many different sides. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, it's just me and Jesus. uh, And there are only one set of footprints behind me because he is definitely carrying me (laughs) through these trials and tribulations. There are so many things that 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 go that way. Right. And this was your this was my trial by fire. I really want this thing. This was your journey. Yeah. And now and every time you had to reassess and say, is this something that I really want to do? Well, you got so far. You're like, I'm this far. Right. 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 You have to keep going. You haven't been brought this far to fail. To fail. Yeah. And so it was perseverance. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this wasn't easy. And now we're in a place where, you know, uh, uh, where I'm pretty stable in the gig I have and have the choice of do I want to do I want to continue doing this? Do I want to grow? Mm-hmm. Uh, I started a private practice as a way of sort of expanding, um, which is the third job that I have now. And there's uh, no the ceiling practice. for you. And there's no ceiling for that. Like yep. I can I can make it as big as I want, as hard as I want to work. Yep. And and so the, a lot of the conversations I'm having now about my career are: Do I stay within the community, the um, university system, or do I strike out on my own? Where um, it would be harder work in one way, but also still doing the stuff I love. So I don't know. Um, it's a big, it's a big thing on my plate. But I will once again. I'll leave you with this before we go on commercial because we got to do that. We got to pause for the cause and and um, I don't know, sell some ads, I guess. But I will say, um, just remember this: when you're going through stuff as you're aging, as you're growing, um, at the time it feels like the worst thing that could ever happen. But you know, people say it gets better. Um, things resolve, but in reality, I am I am a testament. My testimony is no matter how bleak it looks at the time, there usually comes a point years later, days later, months later, you know, where you're like, oh, that was a thing that happened, and that seemed like everything, but now it's just a thing that happened. Seems like eons away, yeah. Yeah, is some other day on another. After episode. the break, we're going to talk about some other important stuff that's going on, and this week, yeah, 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 the other stuff that's going on in the world. But um, I'm sorry for holding this off. I don't want to be that person who's being particularly mysterious about this thing. I just don't want to relive it right it's now. A, yeah, and we it's will, a lot to, to go through, too. And, it, to and you can tell by the fact that we spent so much time on it that it is still a bit of a it's sore spot. A Even five yeah. years later, I'm like, oh, yeah. I got so much at the surface here. Yeah. So that tells me, oh, you need to process this, and maybe this is a way to do it. But we'll do that on another day. Maybe yeah. next maybe next episode or an episode after that or something. Yeah. Once yeah. I can get it, my head wrapped around how I want to tell that story. Because right. it tends to sprawl. Once I try to tell it, because if you haven't noticed, a little long winded. <laughs> so we're going to pause for the cause uh, on that note and come back from our commercial and, and talk to you a little bit more about what's going on in America today. See you soon. So let me tell you about Anchor Podcast. It's the podcasting service that I use. Anchor.fm is the easiest way to make a podcast, and there are many different reasons why. But foremost is it's free. So you don't need to go out and buy a whole bunch of equipment. Uh, If you have a phone uh, or a computer, 
and a microphone, you can record and edit your podcast right on your phone or computer. So that's one major benefit, uh, as well as the fact that they'll distribute your podcast to several different podcasting sites for you. Not only can your podcast be found on Anchor, it can also be found on Spotify, Apple Podcast, uh, and Google Podcast as well. So you don't have to worry about going to all those different sites and setting yourself up. They'll do it for you. You can also make some money on your podcast. Say you have a podcast that only five people listen to on a regular basis. They don't limit you on how many subscribers you have to have in order to be able to make a little bit of change uh, for your podcast to keep yourself going. So pretty much everything you need uh, to start a podcast can be found at Anchor. Dot FM. So go download the app uh, either in the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store or go to anchor.fm to get started. And I guarantee you it'll make things so much easier for you like it has for me. Welcome back. Welcome back. Dr. Rich Hall. I'm the host of the Hall Space Podcast. My lovely and capable wife, Nicole, with me. Hey there. Welcome back from the commercial. And we were talking about aging and our, and growing up and, and uh, some of the trials and tribulations that I've been through mm-hmm. uh, without actually talking about them with any clarity. But like I said, we'll loop back around on that on yeah, another day. Your grad school experience will be a different episode and it'll be um, something that I think a lot of people who are considering school who are Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just in a tough position period like that's you know it'll be an important episode yeah yeah. but it it needs its own episode yes i do believe that you know um but now we're i mean we were talking about um just being older being older being older parents yeah and so we waited we did wait we waited to get married yes you know we met when we were 20 Mm -hmm. and unlike you know, past generations who get married at 20 and start working and doing their thing. We yes. went to school and we dated forever and then we got married. Um, we were engaged in 2005. Yes. And then two years because we wanted to save up for the wedding. Yeah. And so 2007, we got married. And so we were both 29 and 30 years old. Yeah. And then yeah. we didn't have Ron until we were 31. Yes. And so while a lot of the kids that we went to college with were getting into relationships, having kids, even yes. getting married. Many people that I went to like high school and yeah. college with, they have they had started their families now. and stuff. They're, they're, they're starting their they're second done. phase of life now yeah. as grandparents. Yeah. I've got quite a few people and it's like hard to think like, oh, the girl I knew as a cheerleader, she's a grandparent she's, now. Yes, her kid has um, a kid. Yeah. 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 I mean, but we're, we're some of them are close to being, you know, yeah, grand, yeah, full on grandparents. Oh, they, yeah. They've got kids. Because if you're a 20 year old, mm-hmm. your kid will be 20 by now. Yeah. And your 20 year old kids. can have a. I remember Terry said that to me because his son old. turned like, his son's like, what, 19, 20? I think yeah. Adam might be in his 20s now mm-hmm. or just about to turn. He was like, yeah, I could be a grandparent soon. And I'm like, what? No, that doesn't make that any doesn't sense. Make any, you know, Adam's and not yet, that kind of kid. But yeah, but yeah. And yet I mean, it, it biologically, totally, biologically it totally possible. It happen. Yeah. 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 And so. And so we were kind of talking about the pros and cons of. You know, we got together. We met each other when we were particularly young. Yeah. Uh, and either, you know, jumping in head first and doing it then. Or if we had, we'd be we'd be so far done now. We would not we, be homeschooling a kindergartner <laughs> would, yeah. unless it was our grandchild. And then we'd be like, well, sure, send them would, over. We would be helping with the grandkids. That's what we would possibly. Be yeah, possibly. If we had gotten if we had right then. I mean, but I would have made so many mistakes. Well, we de- definitely, definitely. So many more mistakes. I mean, we I made like- mistakes just in our relationship alone. Yeah. We were just young. And, yeah. Uh, in the words of Victoria, doofy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I found out where she got that from, some stupid YouTube thing. But but yeah, uh, doofy. Yeah. yeah. And, and and honestly, you know, I, I like the idea that we got to do all this random traveling. Right. You know, we met the, you know, met the Huddlesons at some point. Mm-hmm. We were able to do cons with them. Do comic cons and travel all around we the East Coast. We could just go anywhere. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. We, and so we weren't trips to rich Charlotte, at all. So trips to Florida. Oh, yeah. We, but we scrounged and we saved. And yeah. And we nickeled and dimed. And I remember we were at a party and someone, we were talking to someone. And we were like, yeah, we'll be in we'll be in New Orleans in a couple of weeks and oh, then yeah. we'll be going to Charlotte. And they were we like, would, why do you do so much traveling? It's like, oh, we have friends who are doing 
Comic Con. Yeah, it we just, it didn't occur to me at that them. time yeah. that it was weird to be doing that much traveling because that was just yeah. what we did yeah. from like 2005, I think from like 2007 to like 2010, to, I think. We, yeah, till, till we had Rob. Rob. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. like three, four years, we were just all over the, the we map went, on the East Coast. And we had a great thing going because we love traveling with them. Yeah. And if we drove, we would drive together. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. if we needed to um, fly, we would just meet and split the hotel. Right, right, And then right. while Terry would work, you, Lee, we and would, I would, would roam the city and have brunches in nice places. Brunch, oh my gosh. Brunch so hard and help would, Terry tear down and then mm-hmm. go out for the night. And yeah, yeah. yeah. It was I mean, a, it was a good, good gig. I wouldn't trade that. That time. Know, I yeah. wouldn't trade that time. Yeah. I mean, as I was, as I was saying in that, um, before, uh, before off the air, um, I do wish we had like gone a little more international. Like I think we, I we didn't see it as within our within our reach. But there was this glass ceiling that we. But for some of the yeah. costs that we spent, just to like you know, we for we one of those trips to Florida, we could have probably you know gone, gone to, to Europe. Europe or, or we could have gone Nigeria to or Nigeria. Oh yeah. I w- there's always a part of me that the the, the my inner hotep. And I, I don't see Hotep as a negative, a full on negative stereotype. I know it's been turned into a negative stereotype. My inner Hotep, whenever I say, I want to go to Paris, why don't I want to go to Africa? What I should want to go to Lagos. I do want to go to Lagos. I mean, if we're asking, absolutely yes, do. I absolutely want to see the pyramids and I'd all absolutely like to see. I would love to go you know, to Egypt. I remember uh, when Pastor Casey Smith did that. He yeah. took a trek to, to Egypt. That was actually before my time, but yes. Oh, you weren't okay. So we mm-hmm. joined. You joined the church after that. But yeah, after he had done our that, but... church, he had gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, him and the first lady and a couple of other members went mm-hmm. to Egypt. And I remember thinking that is the coolest thing. Yeah, and it reminded me of the time when Malcolm sort of did the same thing. Yes, again. yes. He was talking about people of all colors praying together. And yeah, eating yeah. together. And- it definitely. I think it gives you a perspective to travel to. I mean. It, not that other places don't have their own social ills, no. But, but I think in America we forget how multicultural the world is, yeah. And as a result, yeah. we think our concerns are the only concerns, and, that's and that is one of the things that I do want to give my children is, you know, sometimes when you see some of the trials that that kids go through, and, and I definitely see it, mm-hmm. it's because they think their circle is so they're they're used to dealing with this small circle of people, right? right. And the world is so much bigger than that, and that the perspectives that they're often fed by those people like you, you can be yeah. bullied for something because you think this is the way the world works and in reality it's not true there there's the a much larger world many different mm-hmm. ways and when you get out of your your zone of comfort yeah. and your when you get out of group, your bubble mm-hmm. you can really experience other people other right. cultures other thoughts right and I, I honestly i think it makes you more empathetic if you're paying attention yeah, if you're more absorbing empathic. it yes, yes. And, and i think also just the idea that you can do it, right? Yeah. So, that so you can do, you could that you could travel, you, what, you, you could what you think your limits are. Yes, and you probably succeed, exceed them. Yes, and like I said, I always sort of saw my limits as being. I mean, we had a passport because of our honeymoon, but we just, I just, I always had it in mind. But it's always like, well, I needed to save up X amount of dollars to do right, that in order to do. And it. we would just take some of those Florida yeah. trips. Like, let's just hop in a car and drive to Florida. Because we know we what got that a couple is. hundred bucks, and I know I get paid this Friday, so <laughs> right, we'll right, be there right. in time to get more money in the bank yeah. to to make yeah. this trip happen. Yeah, there's um, there's a number of uh, people in a couple of Facebook groups that I'm in where the lady and her daughter, her daughter's a teenager now, they, uh, for their holidays, they go mm-hmm. international. They, yeah. they fly and they experience different countries. And I think and that's I th- such a beautiful thing. Yeah. And I think some of the limitations of what you assume are limitations are Aren't similar really to are not. like when I'm, when we're in Florida and I suddenly need a regular thing that I would have at home. Mm-hmm. And just because I know, I mean, at this point now, we've been to Clearwater so many times that I know, oh, okay, this is where the store is to go get that. I don't need to bring this. If I forgot it, then I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think some of that same, some of those same skills would probably translate well. I remember I was at a, I was at a Republican function uh, with my Republican friend. And we oh, were when talking you drove about, for uh, the vice president. Yeah, no, that that wasn't the thing that oh, this was. Okay. This was, this was probably Randy's, um, when he was applying for state representative. Oh, that's right. He was when he running. was yeah running for state representative. Yeah. But like yeah. I remember talking to a young guy similar, same age as myself, and he was saying that he would often like fly standby to certain places. Like he would fly yeah. to Paris on standby and then stay in a hostel. And yeah. I remember thinking, you can do that. Like right. I had genuinely as a as a kid from Aiken, uh, you know, from College Hill, College Hill, Bar, Cincinnati. Whiskey. You just yeah. had no concept of the idea that yeah. oh, you could get a cheaper ticket by going to the airport. And waiting, waiting in the hopes that a seat opens up that you could sit in for you only need pennies one seat, on the dollar. You. you just need one seat. And yeah. 
you could just wander the world and you always kind of wished how often I had kind of got up the courage to do that. Yeah. Um, never did it. But I'll, I remember saying it to people and they would kind of look at me like I was crazy. Like, you know, you could just hop on a plane and, do, and they would be like, what? And, and, and I guess that also speaks to when you're in these circles, um, you know, other people from like Aiken and, yeah. and well, whatnot. that circle kind of has the same glass ceiling. They, yeah. Yeah. They, they assume the limitations. Yeah. So you're saying to them and they're looking at you like you're a crazy person like that right, doesn't make any right, sense. Right. Right. But this guy told it to me that he does it. Yeah. And I, I checked into it. It seems like a completely a, viable it, thing. Right. You right. know, way back then, this is in the 90s. I don't know, with a security at airports and things like that, you definitely right. probably couldn't do it in the same way you could now. No, but I, I bet you there's a way. I mean, there, there are ways. Yeah. There are, if you really wanted to go somewhere, it's not that expensive if you figure it out. Yeah, there was a guy when I worked at Cincinnati Bell, he's one of the guards, and, you know, I would chat with him at the end of the night. And he said that he, when he lived in Florida, um, if he wanted to do something for the weekend, if you wait for those um, cruise ship tickets, Mm-hmm. They would fill the room. I can even explain to you how it's done, and you might not believe it, but rich kids almost never believe they have limitations. Yeah. They're like, yeah, I can yeah. do this and this, and I, you know, so we have three so or, that, we're at my summer home, and, we're, and you're oh, like, yeah, yeah, what yeah. kind of life yeah. do you live? There are so many kids that I know of that have traveled internationally mm -hmm. way before I ever did. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I had only been out of Ohio mm -hmm. once before you. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I kind of knew that I, I, I brought that on myself. I made the mistake of taking her to Florida <laughs> our first year together. And then now we got to go back every now year. Now we have to go back every year. And it was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to front the bill on that every year. But, <laughs> but you know what, though? It became an ongoing One of the discussions thing. that we had mm -hmm. this past year or so was that we wanted to not do Florida anymore and expand our horizons. Yeah, because we still need to hit the West to Coast. We have not gone to the we West Coast. Not going to the West Coast, and we know people in the West Coast. We, there are people we need to visit. There are people we need to visit. Shout out to Michelle and Joaquin. Hey, Michelle Joaquin and Stephanie. Stephanie. I don't know if they listen to the podcast. But I we're don't know of them. either, but I tell you what, yeah, but no, yeah. I mean there are tons of places that yeah we have yet to visit. Yeah, uh, but plans. Uh, but, I mean, thinking yeah. of like, oh, it's my 43rd year on the planet, 43rd circle mm -hmm. around the sun. Mm -hmm. Things I want to do next are travel. Yep. Um, definitely. And travel some more. Mm -hmm. And travel some more. And then travel some more. I mean, I'm not, I mean, not maybe traveling a little bit more travel, but I mean, I'm not a, I got to see the entire globe. There are definitely some places where I want to stand and be, you know, in the environment and smell the yeah. air and feel the ground beneath my feet. Yeah. And a few waterfalls I'd like to take some photographs of. Yeah, uh, I, I have I have many dreams for what I want to show the kids. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that'll be the and thing, that's too, the is how deal. do we show the kids more? Because they're finally at the age where we feel comfortable with them on a plane. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was always Victoria was too small and noisy to consider to <laughs> right. unleash her on people. But she's getting at the point now where she's you give her a device, now, she can entertain you give herself. give her headphones and a device. and uh, She could get through a five-hour flight, six-hour flight. Oh, yeah. I mean, and honestly, it's only two hours to Florida. I mean, mm -hmm. that'll probably be our first test. Yeah. You know, test could, flight. Or, yeah. It was always a little, like, it feels less expensive to throw them in a car and it drive. It does, but it's so painful. That 15 uh, hours, bro. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot. Yeah, it's hard on the body. It's a, it's hard on our bodies. Yeah, yeah, we lose a whole day because it's like we've been driving 9, 10, 12, Yeah, you're stuck in a car for that yeah. much and our bodies yeah. did not bounce back like they did when we were 20. And the kids are like, we went to the beach or no? Yeah. yeah. And we're like, I need to rest for like two days to get my body back in shape to be able my to also... Hurts. My back hurts. Make to lug all this stuff you need to the beach right, and then right, sit right, out right. there for two hours. But then you get bored and want to go back and now right, we got to find something right. else to do. So Yeah. No, but I, I think... Um, yeah. We, I think we set those goals before COVID happened. When though. the world opens up. When the world opens up. But we had talked about it before COVID happened. Yeah, we had happened. talked we about trying to travel. Yeah, traveling to different to places. Different places mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we have I think there's going to be a boon on travel when this is over. Like, there's going to no, be so much... Like, tourism is going to suffer for the next year or two years. But, and like, people gonna, are going to want to go it's gonna everywhere. Be, it's going to be exponential. Yeah. And I'm going to hop on... Mm -hmm. All of the planes. Yeah. All of the planes. Yeah. And just... Leave me there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Just let yeah. me go. Just leave me there. Yeah, no, I'm for it. I'm for it. I am, I am too. I am too. Absolutely. But I think it'll be good. I think so too. And so I, I think, you know, when you, when your birthday comes around, you do think about all the things that you want to do, yeah. the things that you've done mm -hmm, and, and all mm -hmm, of that. And mm -hmm. so um, th that's the thing. But the interesting thing about your birthday is that it always falls 
um, during it's election on week. election day or the day after election yeah. day. Usually yeah, election day is always within a day or two of my birthday. Right. So election day is either November third or November fourth. Mm-hmm. It's whatever that Tuesday. Yeah. So you is. never had to remember election day because you always no, remember. My no. birthday's happening. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and honestly, I mean, I think some of your, I think one of your birthdays was uh, President Obama party. Yes, so. yes, in two thousand eight, <laughs> we did have an Obama themed birthday party. We had Obama themed, which would have either gone party. really well or, or really, really badly. <laughs> we would have really been really happy or sad, but well, fortunately, he won. So. Fortunately, he won, and 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 and. We had the mom made an Obama cake. Yes, there was an Obama cake. But it was Obama happy cake. birthday routine. You know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know we love you. It was an O-shaped cake. But no, I requested Obama cake. I was you like, did, yeah, you I was did. like, can and you then, make an Obama cake? The, the O of hope. And he was, yeah, she was like, sure. That I'm was like, at yeah. the Buffler Cottage. And then we mm-hmm. were able to do the, um, we went to the inauguration in D.C. that oh, yeah, we did February. That. Yeah, we did that in February. It was freezing. Freezing cold. But it was the most beautiful experience. Yes, so many black people so many in D.C. Beautiful so many black people. Black people. No it was like fight. A, it was like a pilgrimage. It was just. Nothing bad happened, nothing. really. It was so beautiful. It was just black people it was everywhere. Just love mm-hmm. everywhere we went. And we had to walk many, 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 many blocks. So much walking. So much. And we stopped at a couple of different brunches. I think Bridget knew one or two girls that were having yeah. brunches. And then we knew stopped. Tammy had a brunch. Tammy's Tammy had a, had a brunch. brunch. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. But it was a beautiful experience. We it got was. The, we stayed with Aunt Kathy. We got on the train and mm-hmm. we rode it into D.C. Mm-hmm. And it, it was just. We had a great time. We did. And we even got to see them walk a little bit. Yeah, we saw when uh, Obama and them came out of the church, right? Yeah. We were near yeah. the church when he, every president does that, go into the church they thing. Walk and walk to the church. And, and then coming yeah. out into the caravan. So we, no, we, we happened to just... pass by. It's, it was one of those interesting, we had been inside of a store and we mm-hmm. saw them on the news and didn't realize that like, as the direction we're walking in, they're going to be leaving They're going to be coming. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like, oh, oh shoot. Yeah. And, and that one of those, one of those, you know, New York, D.C. moments where yeah. you go from watching a thing on TV to suddenly being next to being the thing inclu- that's in, in TV. It, yeah. Like, oh, hey, I just it's walked like, on the If set. I stop watching the TV, I'll see that they're going to come. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Just a Walk block right away. Past us, and yeah. it was just a happenstance thing. It was. Uh, that, it was. Type of, that type of thing does not happen in Ohio, uh, no. unfortunately. Yeah, so, no. It, it's you know, Washington, it was, D.C. was such a great experience. Yeah, the first time I, we're we're going to take the kids to Washington, we're D.C. We're definitely going to take When the, the world opens up uh, yeah. fully and But I remember safe. that time and I remember how proud my grandfather was to, to experience. Yes, yes. That this, uh, and, the black and, president, and, first black president. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And, and, it, and it wasn't, you know, I, you know, we know Jesse Jackson ran. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, there are yeah. multiple people who ran for president, but, but this, Obama but this was the guy was he was the guy to become the no, president. No, no, but this he was mm-hmm. the guy, right? Yeah, and, yeah. and this was a guy that we really stand, we stood behind, and yeah. and we're excited and about. Had earned, he had earned the thing. The he, title. he had definitely earned it. And so yeah. again, we are coming upon another election, critical election. It feels it's like. incredibly important. Yeah. It's incredibly important. Mm-hmm. Um, let me just go ahead and stop here and say first giving honor to God, who is the head of my life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Listen, whatever happens, the Lord will provide. Right. Mm, uh, mm. However. Yeah. However. Yeah. Try Jesus. Don't try me. We can't we can't have another four years of this guy. I'm just going to put that out there. I agree with you. Um, I agree. He is, he is a bad person and a bad president. He he. He is. I'm still buff- I'm still baffled by the people who don't see how bad a person he is. It's like, what are you paying attention to? What? But I mean, what are you thing. hearing when he says words? Right. What do you hear? What do you hear? Repeat it's, it's, back it's to a, me. Right. It's an interesting experiment in in group out group bias because it's mm-hmm. definitely like mm-hmm. as a person who feels like an out group. Yeah. Uh, in in this particular time, it's like, oh, you're not talking to me. And the people that he is talking to, they're just like, yeah, no, no, no. He's saying fine things. And it's like, no, he's saying horrible he's things. He's saying horrible things. And what a lot of these people that support him are thinking is that he is talking to them. Mm-hmm. And he's not. Well, but he is. No, but he's not. If you He looks like he you, is. but he don't support you. Yeah, well. Okay. But he's, he sound, he's saying all the things I want to hear. And is he? I saw, I saw a, a Twitter post. Racist. A tweet no, that said. You know, that feeling that um, homosexuals have when they're finally able to be out and be respected and people appreciate it. Yeah. 
and they said the the tweet said that that's what people who support him feel like he, he emboldens yeah. these attitudes and feelings that right. they've had right and this is not right. everybody it is the funny thing is like when you get it like don't stereotype us we're not all racist it's like some of you are really willing to give a pass to a lot of racism you, you're, and you're, I was you may not be America. racist but racist isn't a deal breaker for you and right. that Right, right. In and of itself. And when a lot of brown people are telling you, we don't like these things he's saying, and you're like, but it's not that bad. You don't care. You don't care because I'm telling you for us, it's bad. Yeah. Okay. When we hear him say these things. Talk to the family of the George Floyds. These are not things we would tolerate. Talk to the families of of, of Breonna Taylor. Talk Mm -hmm. to them and tell them it ain't that bad. Right. Okay. That's not, you know, and, and, and what's more, which is even ridiculous, is the Biden trust. The Biden Harris tr- uh, truck truck. Yeah. Let me get that word right. Um, is down in Texas, and um, they have tons of Trump supporting trucks and cars oh, oh, surrounding the van. Yeah, to the point where they decided not to. They didn't get out. They didn't hold their event they because they were ev- scared that. I don't know if anybody's seen the video yet or not, but it's mm-hmm. a ton of. It's several cars trucks. And trucks. It didn't say how many, but it was several. Many of the trucks uh, obstructing the highway. I love how these are the same people that are like, I can't believe they're protesting on the highway. What if there's an emergency? And these are the same people with Using. Trump signs, mm-hmm. with with Trump flags. I drive through so many flags on the way to work. So many Trump pins, Trump pins, Trump pins, Trump pins. Oh my gosh. Ugh. It makes me sad because I would really love a house out there. With in that Butler County, of land, yeah. Boy. Well, I mean, there's a there's an interesting phenomenon that happens when you get more agrarian. Uh, agrarian people tend to remain Republican for a lot of different reasons, and there, there's a lot of things that could be said about why. Um, but the more the more a, per, a place urbanizes and becomes more metropolitan, say, I think location that's makes when you a tend difference. to see more. Yes, no, it yeah. is it is definitely delineated. Like the you could draw the lines. Stuff doesn't affect you the same in the country, yeah, as it does for you in the city. Right. And so you don't understand why there would no be government why. that interferes or why gov- why you need say social programs because right. you don't rely on right. those things out you don't in rely rural on areas. Any of it because you're out yeah. you've got acres. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And you have to learn to be self-sufficient. Yeah. And so a gun is a tool there. It's not a right. thing that's killing your right. fellow man. It's a thing that protects you. Right. Like right. there are just stark differences and I fundamentally understand that. But and there's, that's the there's, hard part about running an entire country is that yeah. you have so many different people with different vested interests. But you know, there are people who can live that way yeah. and and live the life that they live, but mm-hmm. still understand that the life that they live could be vastly part different. Part of the problem is the messaging. So, I mean, uh, you know, you say that the media as a monolith uh, sends out certain messages and, and promotes certain ideals. And in mm-hmm. this regard, I think there is a lot to be said for um, you know, because politics is a game uh, that needs to be won by yeah. a particular side, a lot of different tactics are used. Yeah. And as a result, um, people have you have to win people over. I think I learned that. When did I learn that? Al Gore. Al Gore taught me that. Al Gore. Yes. Al Gore the taught me. created the Internet. Yeah. Al Gore <laughs> taught me that uh, you, people need to be emotionally invested. People didn't emotionally like him enough, even though he was a smart guy. Yeah. I remember thinking. Bush is not necessarily a bad person, but he's not the guy you trust to do jobs. No. Al Gore was the guy who would stay late to do the job. Right. George but- Bush was the guy that people liked. And so they voted for him. The Republicans yeah. have had a lot of different uh, presidents who Which people just like. interesting because his brother didn't do quite so well when he tried who, Bush? to run later. Bush's brother? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, also wasn't a person who engaged emotions. I think to be president, you have to have people engage you emotionally and intellectually. But I mean, as we've learned with, uh, you know, 45, emotion is enough. If you can get uh, a, a good enough emotional reaction, people might overlook uh, your intellectual flaws so, so, on the basis of just they have an emotional investment in you so, as a person. So ultimately, and in a what culture you, of celebrity. But yeah, it's it's so ultimately the game is to engage people so that they feel seen, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean if you remember, even in your own experience, right, you ran for class president, right? I did. I did the and work, man. Yeah, you I were going to do the work. The work. And I was the interim president. Right, right, I right. I did all of the work. Right, right, right. But when it came time to, for the people to vote... For the elections, it was the guy who the had popular never... Guy. They voted for the popular guy. Yeah. They, he had not shown up to any meetings. He was not meeting with the... Mm-hmm. the uh, Clifton uh, 
organization groups like we were. We was not in any of that. Yeah, yeah. And people will vote for a guy they like because that makes them feel seen and like. But I'm in the country doing the actual work. We love people with status because it makes us feel better to have beautiful, smart, who we see as beautiful, smart people at the top. Whether or not they can do the job, we don't always vet by how the job is done and whether or not they're doing the job. We instead focus on. I mean, I was kind of cute. Mm, you didn't have it together enough. You obviously weren't popular enough. I was not popular at all. Mm-hmm. That's not the point. I did the job. Yeah, nobody cared. No, I'm sorry. Cared. I'm sorry. That. I mean, and, and so we just know that about human beings, and so that's why this election is definitely something we can't take for granted. Um, to just echo a lot of the sentiment that's being passed around, and I'm not like the, the interesting thing is like I'm I'm not strictly Democrat. Like I tend to vote Democrat because they say the things I like to hear, um, and I think. That doesn't mean that I don't have any problems with the Democratic Party. That doesn't mean that I I don't disagree on some major things or know that in some ways they have their own apathy to my conditions and the things that I think are important. Um, You know, my stump issues are always education and mental health. And, um, you know, I I think we should do something about the court system because I do know it's unfair. Uh, But like... I think in having those particular issues, I know when they're being ignored and I know when you have a person who spends more time on them and Republicans traditionally just do not spend time on those particular issues, even though I know and the research shows that they have long term problems. If you ignore education, if you ignore mental illness, it just society has not been the same since we deinstitutionalized and we need to do more for our most vulnerable and we can't call ourselves a Christian nation. By the way, we should not be a Christian nation. They specifically put it in the Constitution. You're supposed to separate church and state. So some of the issues that are legislated are not legal problems, but they are instead moral problems, which people should with them and their creator decide. But I'm a believer that the country shouldn't necessarily mandate any religious doctrines because that's not what they made this country to be. We have to, as a country... Um, sort of do what we need to do to get ourselves um, realigned, I think. And some of that will come with new president guy. You sound real hopeful there. I I shouldn't be hopeful? Is that what you're saying? New new president guy? New president guy. We we get boring new president guy, and that will help to right the ship. I'll take boring any day in comparison to, like, I... (laughs) We should have a reality show president. We should never again... Have a reality show, reality show can't president. Believe that he won in the first place. I, as I said in what was Especially that, 2016, after so much awesomeness, we had eight years of awesomeness. Oh, Don't care what. No, no, no. I mean that's that, that's the problem though. Any time history has showed us, any time a black person goes to what goes Two beyond. Any time a black person goes beyond what white people consider too far, too fast. <laughs> White people will. He done done got all uppity on you. White people will. It is historically proven that any time white people think that black people have exceeded their grasp, their reach has exceeded their grasp, they will inevitably always have a snapback. This is this is this is historically proven. They will literally burn down neighborhoods if they believe you've come further than they think you should. And I think. Uh, you know, 45 is you don't get the uh, I think I said this when I was teaching a class it's like you don't get the the scrumptious smorgasbord of decency and honor that was the Obama presidency without yeah. having to take the crap that was the 45 presidency. Like it's the <laughs> other side of the equation. Like as a society, saying we just this have to do this. I think with America. Yes. Like any time there are multiple examples of Black people got got too far too fast. White people were like, we can't have this. We're going to break the very systems we put in place to make sure this never happens again to prove that this shouldn't have happened in the first place. <laughs> well, I, and know, so th- I, I, I mean, why else would you explain? Give everyone health care. We hate you for that. How dare you? How dare you yeah. even try that? And so much so that we're going to spend so many years arguing about why that was a bad idea, but never give a, a cogent plan on how to have a better plan. Well, 45 doesn't have a plan for anything. He's very good at talking about big things. He's doing big things. He just uses the, the word things. big a lot. Things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can talk vaguely. Air you can say some people are saying. He's, he essentially is really good at hacking the human brain. <laughs> it's amazing he's, to watch as he, a person who studies people. He is making a certain uh, population feel seen. Yeah. Um, and feel powerful and strong. He's a powerful leader. Yeah. Let me say. Above listen, reproach. I don't. 
I try not to curse. No, you're not supposed to really curse too much on the podcast. We try to keep I know, it relatively I know, clean. But for the population that he's speaking to uh-huh. and all those yahoos. No, I mean, it's not their, all yahoos. There's some rich people who are like, yep, no, we're voting no, Republican no, no. too. We oh, have no, to. Honey, we have no. to save the country from those other no. people who are going to burn it down. No, 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 no. Uh, Kirstie Alley, they're included. They're all yahoos too. Mm, mm, right? Mm-hmm. I have very strong words for mm. those people mm. and their stupid thoughts. Oh, I do. How dare you call names? Your liberals are supposed to be the ones who are loving and bleeding heart. And I am a bleeding you're heart. You're either bleeding. I don't know. This year, we're either bleeding heart or we're also burning down the cities. I can't. I don't know. Which the rhetoric is so we? contradictory. Which one are we? I feel right like, now. I honestly, you have to I stop. had such a visceral. And I don't act. know. Somebody had a laptop at some point. I don't know. It doesn't. None of it makes sense. I had such a visceral, re- visceral reaction to all those dumb trucks and cars following that van. Mm-hmm. I'm like. I, I feel. I mean, and you know, and the they're, thing is, they're egging people on, and I feel like here's the thing about it: liberals almost never clap back in this with the same. I'm looking for the clap back, and that that's, we don't. I mean, if you look at the statistics that show. Should. Like over 200 times, I think it was like 120 times. I'm not 200. It's not 200. I feel like it was like 120 times. Um, Black Lives Matter rallies overall been relatively peaceful. Yes. More, more of the time when there is violence, it is either police instigated violence or right. there are right. times where um, people have just driven over protesters. 120 right. times people have driven over protesters. Right. Uh, as a way of sort of getting back at them. For the most part. Statistically, we are not acting upon the rage that a lot of people feel, that, and they're still doing but it within we certain did, parameters. Boy, it would be we would I genuinely tear it down, and I do think that there are people who are trying to agitate. And honestly, even I, if you look at like Minnesota, that some many of the agitators were not necessarily outside agitators so much as like homegrown, you know, white terrorists. So there, yeah, there, yeah. there's more of a threat in this country of white terrorism uh, than there is uh, black nationalism, uh, but. The rhetoric says uh, we're the ones to worry about. It's always we're the ones to worry about, not the others. And so, I, I, I mean, I feel you know, there's 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 a part of me that is like is like Martin, right? Like, hey, we got to find a way. Love mm-hmm. or love conquers all. We got to yeah, find yeah, the best you. way to right. But then there's the other part of me that's like, so you asking for it. Nigga, here now. <laughs> oh, you just used the N word on the podcast. I'm I gotta bleep that out. I'm sorry. I gotta have to bleep that out. <laughs> um, no, no, no. I mean, but, but, I, I, mean, but I can understand I mean? that. Like, we hit our limits. We hit our limits at a certain point. We hit our limits, and there's so much frustration. Yeah. I mean, they the other side of that is. They can't even ride their van to do their event. You don't wanna go to the event, don't go to the event. Right, right, right. But right? I mean, you know, show of force. It is the- also Texas. Like, if you're gonna go to Texas, be ready. I mean, but hey, America's, bleep bleep America's seen worse things before around voting. It, it's just we've told ourselves we were beyond that. That's what's, to me, the so interesting is about this. The we're supposed to be beyond it. We're supposed to be beyond it. Supposed to is a we're funny word. We're supposed to be beyond it. Supposed to is a funny word. It's supposed to be. Says who? Growth. Says, yeah. yeah. Says time. Says history. But when, I mean, but when you have a person at the top who's literally saying, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Stand back, stand by. Then you're going to get people who get more and more aggressive about there's, these positions. <laughs> which is, uh, listen, there's this meme, and I want you to post it, where it's like, stand back, stand by, and it's like he's, you know, doofy. With mm-hmm. the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because that's, what, that's, that's how I feel about you guys. That's how I feel. I mean, but there are a lot of them who are waiting for, you know, the order. And he is often giving, saying, doing things that are inflammatory that, you know, traditional modern presidents just haven't done for years. But also, I said this when he was when he was elected. There's a lot about him that's like, oh, no, no. He, I can see why white people don't see him as racist because, I mean, he's pretty much like a president we would have gotten 50 years ago. Hmm. Except for some extra levels of incompetence baked in. But like he sees himself as very Nixon. like I mean, they, were probably, and, they were probably just as incompetent back then, too. Yeah, ultimately, no, 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 not this incompetent. I mean, like, you know, you, you got your Hoover and, you know, mm-hmm. your uh, McCarthy, not McCarthy. Shoot, I'm blanking oh, on the name. Um, uh, uh, but yeah. Yeah, I, I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but, um, but still, it's... it's. <laughs> but it, it's, it wasn't, you know, some of his racist rhetoric is just old school rhetoric. And that's why no, that's why white people love it, because they're like, I mean, it's no, he's saying it as it is. But it's like, if we stop saying stuff like that, 
a few years ago or a few a couple decades back because we realized it's bad to say things like that. Stop so saying it publicly. You're not supposed to say it publicly. He says he says a lot of the quiet stuff out loud. He does. So he'll because say he like, oh, no, we're trying not to get he, as many votes from those guys. You're has, like, you're not supposed to say that. He has. But also, no, he's the I mean, he's what the, the Republican Party built itself to be this. So, I mean, he's the chicken coming home to roost. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you kept going and then I forgot what I was going to say. Uh-huh. I'm no, sorry, I bad. mean, he's he's That's one of the reasons I try not to make the podcast about him because you you just get into this no you thing. listen i told you i was going to be on my stuff when you started talking about the yeah. politics and yeah. and honestly he's not any different than people his age from his generation right mm-hmm. i i get that i get that uh i i don't care mm-hmm. we we a lot of us have evolved okay and just mm-hmm. because you choose not to um doesn't mean that we have to uh, acknowledge it, right? We should shun it. We should put it in a box. We should put that box in the ocean. See, I'm just getting, you know, this is why we don't talk politics. I'm just riled up. and it's Right, just, right. Got your blood all up. I just got my, you know, and I don't have no blood pressure medicine. This is, I just, please vote, y'all. Hey, go out and vote. Something please can be vote. done. Don't let them make Something you feel can like can nothing be can be done. Something can right. be done. And honestly, it's like, a lot of people say, and and I will repeat it, just in case there are people that just don't know, the the president is voting for the president is in, incredibly important, but so is your lo- local elect elections, yes. right? There are judges mm-hmm. that are just making ridiculous decis- decisions, yep. right? Yep. Our su- Supreme Court. I mean, y'all saw how that went, right? Yep. I mean, yep. wow, wow. Yep. That lady is just. Ugh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, uh, so we need to make sure that we're doing well, we, our duty. We need to do our duty to get things under control. We do need to it. All of our votes matter. Yeah. Um. There are there are hoops that we have to jump through, right? So it is Sunday. It is November first. Uh, at this point, if you vote, you need to either go to the board of elections in person, or you need to go to your specified. Um, voting location. Yes. Um, we're going to vote in person on Tuesday. Um, mm-hmm. Mailing just not something that we were interested in doing. Um, I know that the old early voting has been going on, um, but yeah, a lot of people have done it. Record um, numbers of early record voters. numbers, record numbers, which I think is fantastic. I want to go. I want to do it in person. I want to get my sticker. I want you to say that you got my vote. It's incredibly important to me. Yeah. And I think that it should be important to everybody, right? There are judges. I agree. There are prosecutors. There are all kinds of local uh, elections that are also important that we should be paying attention to as well. All that stuff matters. It also goes back to people died. People were harmed. Yes. For this right to vote. I am black and I'm a woman. So there was an immense amount of struggle to even afford Give you the right opportunity yeah. exactly so yeah, we have to do our civic duty we we do we do because yeah. they they did it for us right so that we could have this right so i could and just, they're doing a lot to make it harder for us to they're doing they're which tells me that there's, there's obviously something yeah. in the fact that they don't want us to vote. Right. Like they've been playing the long game. That's, they have been that's playing. That's one thing the, they've, been done, they've done masterfully is play the long yep, game on, yep, making yep. sure that our votes mean yep, less. Yep. They do a lot of gerrymandering. Or that you just mail your, I mean, you put rigging. it in and mm-hmm. it's, they're doing a lot of jerry rigging. So, mm-hmm. which is why we say go down to the Board of Elections where it's official. Yeah. Or if you I have I like the Board of Elections has done a pretty good job of trying to get the information out. There's a lot more yes. advertising and things around that. There's a ton that. of it. Listen, I'm already ready. Registered Facebook. Thank you. Uh-huh. I'm going to vote. I promise. Right, 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 okay. right, 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 Okay, right. okay, okay. Thank you, Instagram. I'm I am 42. Gonna vote. I'm right. going to vote. I figured it out. Been voting the whole time. I've been, right. You know, I've never missed an election. Okay, right. local or otherwise. Um, right. But 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 yeah, I think um, there is something to be said for making sure you get out there, mm-hmm. follow the rules. Mm-hmm. You know, I know some people are. I saw somebody was at the board of elections here in Cincinnati and the guy was like I'm gonna act a fool if they make me wear a mask sir you have to wear a mask everywhere every you you should be wearing a mask everywhere why aren't you you already prepared for that why aren't you so you don't want to vote maybe I don't want you to vote 
Right. Because <laughs> I feel like by your behavior. <laughs> right. Right. And it's just an, like if if we had better leadership, the whole mask thing wouldn't have been. It wouldn't have been. I, I think and I agree. I think um, what's interesting is these last four years have shown us exactly what that position can do as far as yeah um influence right yeah, yeah. i mean we we joked about i used to always think that, that the president was just a figurehead yeah 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 we joked about that with bush right, right. that the real person behind it was a bunch of other people yeah. and maybe the vice president cheney right yeah we joked about that all the time like he's not really doing all of the actual work it's just those guys behind him Trump does what he wants. Yeah. 45 does what he wants. Yeah. And, 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 and well, he also had, brings in a lot of incumbent to people who are willing to do stuff. Uh, and then, and then he, and then he fires them or they get fired mm-hmm. or they go to jail. Mm-hmm. Like how, 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 how people don't see this as an issue. How, how many people have left? What's the, I just, it's just amazing to me to see all that is happening in that office and, and still be like, no, 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 no. No, no, no. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. That brings me to another point. Um, How do you feel about some of our African-American celebrities who say they're going to vote for him? I don't know why we never listen to celebrities in the first place. Why do we even care? I get that. I get that. I Like, I don't, I don't care what Kanye does. Mm. He doesn't live in the same world that I live in, (laughs) right? Uh, Same for, um, uh, what is it, 50 Cent and... And Ice Cube and Little Wayne. Um, how do you feel about su- their support of Forty Five? Um, I just so Ice Cube's. I, I, I will get into the weeds on the Ice Cube didn't really support so Forty Five so much as he spoke with him. I which yeah, on the one hand I, it's like speaking to the president whether I, or not he's a complete no. idiot is I'm a thing you you're that. allowed to do. I'm I'm and I'm not the worst that. thing you could ever do in the world. Agree. I think I think some people some of them have endorsed him or said you know Fifty Cent said it but Fifty Cent is a notorious troll. Little Wayne he, did but Little Wayne also is under. They said it for tax and, reasons right that it, they would vote for him either for tax ta- Little uh, Fifty Cent said tax reasons. Little Wayne said he would. Or, he just endorsed the the platinum plan, but also right. Little Wayne is going to need to be pardoned on some legal things. So he's he's also playing a personal his personal game. It's exactly what you just said, though. Lack of empathy for empathy. the yeah, or just sort of seeing how his help for you is better than what he might be doing to. That I, I've I've appreciated the people who have said. Um, the fact that Trump is offering to do things for people in the future doesn't discount all the bad he's done as of today. Agree. Right. Or, yeah. or even that Joe Biden might have said some things in the 90s when we were genuinely looking for ways to curb the street violence and right. crime right. that was happening as right. a result of drugs. And rather right. than just um, hold him accountable for what he did uh, 20, 30 years ago, mm-hmm. there's a guy who's genuinely doing bad things today. I don't think of Biden as the best, most uh, best person in the world, but I also I, know he is completely different than the guy right. in the office now and who's I, truly screwing up the bag for honestly, everybody. Right, and, and I think that was and I think that was our, it, the issue um, with the last election with Hillary. They had some issues with uh, things that she had said and done or that her husband had said and done mm-hmm. in the 90s. And I understand that we've got to we've got to look at their history. We got to yeah. look at the things that they've done. But guys, th- the legit every day, 45 does something new. And you're like, really? Yeah, really? Really? Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it is. Exhausting. Yeah. The amount of of. I mean, I don't know how he didn't lose a lot of support when he made fun of the disabled reporter. I don't know how he didn't lose support after he's putting so those many, babies so, in cages. There are so many things I he could do. Know. There are so many things he's done. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we can't get into the list because this podcast just it can't be five hours long. Yeah. There's many things he's done that have definitely been outside of human decency, immoral, questionable, just wrong things. And uh, as a result, we've got to use the one lever we have now, and that is voting. And then after that, whether or not he concedes, we'll use hopefully the other levels of power that can be used against him. But I do believe, I, do, I believe the Senate's definitely going to flip. I'm, I'm a big believer that there's going to be some changes there. Hopefully we can get Lindsey Graham and Mitch McConnell out and, and make some changes. 
You know, just lay Mitch McConnell down, okay? Mm, lay him down. Mm. Lay him all the way down. Um, have all of the seats, sir. I, I believe that um, there's going to be some change. Change is going to come. I'm a strong believer in that. So as I walk into my, so it's interesting. I, when, like I said, I took my birthday off. I knew that my birthday and, and uh, election day didn't realize I was going to be taking the day after election day off uh, until it like occurred to me. Oh, wait, you're the day you're taking off is the, the day you will be recovering from either a good night or a bad night. I remember when, uh, 45 was elected in uh, 2016. There were a lot of people who were very hurt and sad and, and a lot of marginalized populations who were very afraid Mm -hmm. and a lot of their fears have actually come to bear. They've lost a lot of rights in the past Mm -hmm. four years that just, we, we had hoped things were reversed. Mm -hmm, Yeah. mm -hmm. And, and there have been consequences for these people uh, who were afraid Uh, and, and the, the increase in, in negative rhetoric and things that have been very hurtful and bad. And uh, as a result, um, you know, uh, I, I don't believe that those populations will do well uh, if he does get another four years. I believe that, that that's going to be, you know, we're going to see a lot more bad things as a result. So um, that's one of the reasons that I think it's important that we, we use what we can uh, to make the change. Um, on that note, I think it's probably time for us to wrap up. But but please go out and vote. Yes, if you please haven't do. already yeah, yeah. done it. Um, thank mm-hmm. you so much for listening. Yes. Um, it is about that time. You know what the music means. You know what the music means. Our time is up. I say good day, sir. I say good day. The Hall Space Podcast is brought to you by Hall Productions, LLC. Show notes and credits can be found at our webpage, the Hall Space Podcast.wordpress.com. Any questions, comments, or concerns can be sent to us at the Hall Space Podcast at gmail.com. The show is written by Dagger Pin Davis. Music is curated by DJ Cabal. The show is produced by Chuck Jones and recorded at Slash and Trash Studios. If you like what you hear and you want to hear more, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And I hope you all have a good week. I figured I'd drop this quick piece out on my big bro. Because it's his birthday. He turned 43 years old. So dig, dude. We came a long way from Slash and Trash News. You got your own comics in the podcast, too. Back in the few, showing me why I always want to be like you. Woo! So dig on the husband and father with three kids, a good doctor, shiny sample, and showing us how to live. I couldn't be me if you hadn't paid out the way. So it's a small thing for me to take time to say, I love you, man. You're my hero, and I'm forever your fan. So the happiest of witches on this, your birthday, and you as good as you, then I know it's going to be great. Ha-ha! <laughs> House Hall. We rise brilliantly.